In 2020, I created this custom Halo Wars 2 Banished Phantom, and you guys loved it. So much so that you spammed the comment section of these videos, pleading Mega to create an official set so you guys could have your own Banished Phantom. In 2022, Mega released an official Halo Infinite Banished Phantom, and the community was almost instantly divided on how they felt about it. I recently released a review video for the official set and confirmed that whilst I do recognise it has its flaws, I still like it as a set. The reason I produced this comparison video is not to somehow prove which is better, it's because you guys asked me to. So let's get into it. So if we're going to compare these two builds, we need to recognise a number of factors. Firstly, although they are both Banished Phantoms, they are from different games, so therefore reflect different art styles. I personally prefer the art style of Halo Wars 2 over Halo Infinite when it comes to the Phantom, but that doesn't make it better, it's just my personal opinion. Secondly, these builds are on a completely different scale. My custom build is more in line with a signature series set and the official set is much smaller, consisting of fewer pieces, and whilst bigger isn't always better, it does often allow you to create more detail, which gives a better end result. And thirdly, as a custom build, I was free to build how I wanted, with no concern for piece count, budget caps, weight restrictions, and partner approval, to mention just a few. One of the first things to compare is how accurate these builds are. When it comes to the official Mega set, I feel it's very accurate, but that's because it has to be. It's Mega's job to effectively recreate the in-game asset in block form. If they didn't, it might not get the go-ahead. My Phantom is more of a loose representation rather than a direct copy of the in-game asset. This was mainly to keep the build interesting for me. I mentioned during the build process that I was taking a number of creative liberties with this build just because I felt it might make it look slightly better or it would just keep it more interesting for me. So in terms of accuracy, I would say the official Mega set is the better build. When it comes to features and detailing, you can see externally they both have chin mounted underslung guns that can be retracted into the underside of the cockpit. They both have three doors that you can lower on either side and pose figures on, the centre of which both features a plasma turret on my custom build. It is one of the old plasma turret style fixed units. And on the infinite build, Mega chose to incorporate a buildable projectile launcher plasma turret. Both vehicles have good detailing on the underside. The official set incorporating the thruster pods into the stand, as opposed to my custom build that uses the gravity tube and just some clear blocks for the front of the stand. On the rear, the official build has movable talons. On my custom build, they are fixed. As for the rest of the exterior detailing, you can see that I've used large amounts of plates and tiles and really layered the build up to give the effect that I was looking for in terms of where it changes from red to grey to silver and black. But this area of the build alone would make the parts count skyrocket, which is more than likely one of the reasons why the official set was left with so many exposed studs. It's also worth mentioning at this point that the reason they are different colours is because the red I used for my custom build is from a Destiny Cabal Harvester set. And the silver is a different colour because it's the old Mega Blocks silver as opposed to the new Mega Constructs Halo Infinite era bright silver that we're used to with the current builds. In terms of access to the cockpit, both are gained by raising the roof of the cockpit. On the official build, the roof stays attached, but it's double hinged to allow it to lay flat out on the floor in front of the Phantom. Whereas on my custom build, you can raise it and leave it there, but it's always best to just disconnect it whilst you're servicing the inside of that cockpit area. In regards to the inside, you can see due to space restrictions, the official build is limited to one chair and one printed console with two handholds either side of the chair. And that's about all you get, mainly due to space limitations and possibly again, part count. 
when it comes to my custom build I really went to town on this area and you can see as well as the main cockpit area I created a ops room just behind it in between the actual cockpit and the rear troop bay and to gain access to the troop bay on the official set the roof splits in half and falls down to either side allowing amazing access to the troop bay even if the feature itself isn't everybody's cup of tea on my custom build you simply pull the roof off whilst you do still have good access it's not as good as the official build in terms of interior detailing for the troop bay once again mega were clearly limited by parts because it's relatively sparse in there there are some clips that you can hold weapons on and there is a small grav table build which is a nice touch aside from that you've got the exit tube for the grav lift and that's about it as for my custom build i threw a huge amount of pieces to this interior it was really important to me that i made the interior of this phantom as good as i could possibly get it so I think we can conclude if detailing is your thing on your sets and you're not so worried about them being lore accurate, then you're probably going to prefer the custom build at this point. So now I think it's time to move on to the bit you've all come here for, the side-by-side -side comparison. And as you can see, there's quite the difference. So while the turntable's doing its turny thing, I'll give you a few statistics. The official Mega set weighs 1.3 kilograms and the custom build weighs 3.4 kilograms. The official set is 27 centimeters wide and the custom build is 42 centimeters wide. The official set is 43 centimeters long and the custom build is 59 centimeters long. Height wise, the official set's 15 centimeters and the custom 23 centimeters. If I had to hazard a part count, I would guess at around 3,000 pieces. Now, I do have one more comparison to show you which features a modification of the official build. But before I do that, if you're enjoying the video, I just want to remind you to like, comment and subscribe. Now, I mentioned earlier on in the video that when I carried out my review, I said I liked this set and I do like this set. I'm glad that they made it. But there's one thing about it that I really don't like, and that's these. These parts, as far as I'm aware, were created especially for this set and their purpose is to act as a stand. And what they've tried to do is disguise it as thrust coming out of the anti-gravity pods, or at least that's what I think it's supposed to resemble. Now, while I believe I know why they did this, and I think it's a stability issue. So when the troop bay is opened and you want to position figures on the outside of the troop bay, the set won't topple over like it would if you just had a central stand. But for me, unfortunately, the trade-off of this stand completely ruins the silhouette of the actual build from any angle. To show you what I mean, you can see I've made some modifications here. I've replaced the orange tubes with the standard repulsor rings that I used on my custom build, as well as the blue gravity tube from the original Covenant Phantom. And then on the front, I've just used some clear plastic bricks. And as you can see, when you put it back on the turntable, it completely transforms the silhouette of the set. It almost changes the shape of the entire build. Personally, I think for the better, it puts the focus back on the shape of the ship and it stops it looking like one giant box. Now, when it comes to display, I generally don't like to modify my official sets. I like them to be on display as they came out the box. But this may be one exception where I may actually lose the orange stands and leave it as it is on display because I just think it does the actual Phantom more justice like this. So those are my thoughts. Now it's time to leave yours in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.